The previous video went through the formal mathematical solution to integration over arbitrary sets, using characteristic functions to define the integral. In this video, I want to talk about more practical issues of calculation. How do I actually calculate these integrals? The characteristic function is theoretically useful, but it doesn't really do anything for calculating. To get to calculation, let me start with an, an interesting example. Say I wanted to calculate the volume of a square pyramid using double integration. And never mind that there may be more efficient ways to do such a calculation. Let's say that the pyramid has height a and side length 2b. Such a pyramid can be expressed as a function over the interval negative b to b times negative b to b. This is the function. The absolute value of signs are necessary to give the four slopes of the pyramid. And I want to integrate to find this volume. But the absolute value of signs are a problem here. So I need to integrate in pieces. I could restrict to one quarter of the pyramid over the interval 0 to b times 0 to b. But there is still a problem. The pyramid still has a sharp corner here, expressed by the absolute value of the function. To really understand this, I need to integrate over a triangle, one half of this interval, one eighth of the total pyramid. So how do I integrate over a triangle? This will be the first non-interval integral I do, but it will set the pattern for all the rest. The trick is to allow variable bounds. In an iterated integral, the outside bound always has to be constant. So I set the outside bound to be x in the range 0 to b. But then, the inside bound can depend on a variable that is outside it. So, for the bound on the y variable, instead of having constants that would lead to an interval to a square, I go from 0 to x. That is, I go up to the line y equals x, from y equals 0 to y equals x. The bounds on y can be functions of the variable x. This lets me get to the integral. Here are those bounds, 0 to b on the outside for x. The outside bounds must always be constant. And then 0 to x on the inside. The variable bounds can only depend on variables outside of them. x is outside of y, so the y bounds can depend on x. In this region, the triangle, x is always larger than y, and both x and y are positive. Therefore, I can drop both absolute value bars and simplify the integrand into something I can actually work with. This produces an integral I can actually calculate. To set up this integral, I chose to make x constant and y variable, but I could have made the other choice as well. If I made the y bounds constant, y from 0 to b, then what happens to x? Well, x now has to start from the sloped line and end at x equals b, so the bounds in x are y to b. Notice that the variable bound was the upper bound in y, but it is the lower bound in x. For this triangle, the, diag the diagonal line can be the end of the y range or the start of the x range. Using the second version, I can rewrite the integral with y on the outside and x on the inside. Both of these are the same triangle, so regardless of the function f, both will calculate the same integral. So let me finish the calculation. I'll use the first version with constant bounds in x and variable bounds in y. I'll integrate in y, which produces ay minus axy over b, because both terms are constant in y. Then I evaluate on the bounds, substituting x for y, and then with subtraction, substituting 0 for y. The latter terms all disappear, in this case, due to multiplication by 0. Then I get the x integral. I integrate in x and evaluate on the bounds from 0 to b, and the result is ab squared over 6. Now this was 1 eighth of the total pyramid, so the volume of the total pyramid is 8 times this, which will give you 4ab squared over 3. Notice that a box with side lengths 2b and height a would have area would have volume rather 4ab cubed. So the pyramid is one third of this volume, which is a pretty believable value. Let me recap in general. For integration of a function of two variables, if y is the inside function, its bounds can depend on x. But if x is the inside function, its bounds can depend on y. However, the outside bounds must be constant. I can't have the outside bounds on y depending on the inside variable. This doesn't make sense. 
And finally, this scales up in dimension quite nicely. For a function of three variables, the inside integral may have bounds that depend on both of the outside variables, and likewise the middle integral can depend on the variable outside of it, but not on the variable inside it. And the outside bounds, as before, must just be constants.